One method for finding forward kinematics for complicated robots is the dynavet hartenberg method. So this consists of four parameters, joint angle, link offset, link length, and link twist. And it relates each coordinate frame to the one before it. So then you can multiply all of the coordinate frames together and find the transformation from the base to the tip. So each transformation from one coordinate frame to the next is represented by the product of four basic transformations. This is a rotation around the joint, then a translation in that direction, then another translation perpendicular to that to get to the next frame, and then finally twisting around the between the two frames. So the transformation matrices for each of those, you can see since Z is the joint axis, then we will have a rotation around Z first and then a translation in the Z direction. Next, we'll have a translation in the X direction, which is along the link and a rotation around that axis. Putting all those together, we multiply all the transformations through, it comes out to be this. So rotation in each frame i relative to the one before it, frame i minus one. Now, how do we know what to put in for each parameters? Well, theta i is a joint angle. So this is the angle that each joint rotates. Usually it is also another way to look at it is the angle between each x-axis and the one before it. So in this one, theta i is the angle between xi and xi minus one for link i. Then the offset is the parallel distance between those two x-axes. So in this case, there's not really a parallel distance because the origin of both frames are along the link. Now, if for example, this frame, this yellow frame was located up at the top of link i minus one, then that link offset would be the thickness of the link. The link length, ai, is the distance between the z axes. So for link i minus one, it is that distance from z i minus two to z i minus one. For link i, it's going to be the length of that link from the z axis of i, the z axis of i minus one. And finally, the twist angle is the angle between the z axes. Now, since all of these z axes kind of point up, you can see that the joints each rotate around parallel axes, then there is no twist angle here. But if one of the joint axes pointed into the page or out of the page, then we would have a twist angle. There are some special cases for parameter assignment. Usually you want Z to go along the axis of the joint and then X to go between those, the, the axis before to the current axis. So perpendicular to the Z axes. Now, if Z I and Z I minus one are not in the same plane, then X goes perpendicularly between them. If they're parallel, X goes along the link, that perpendicular distance again between them. But if the two Z axes intersect, so there is no parallel distance between them, then the X axis just goes perpendicular to the plane that those two form. The approach to doing the DH method is first identify the joint axes. So put one Z axis on each joint then attach the coordinate frames. So make sure that X goes on the link between the Z axes. Y you can kind of ignore because you don't use it in the calculations. Usually steps one and two will be done for you in class by the professor. And that is just so that everybody starts out right using the same coordinate frames and can supposedly get the same parameters. However, if you are doing this on your own to study or if you're doing it for your job, then you will be 
responsible for identifying the joint axes and what directions the coordinate frame should point. So then once you've got the coordinate frames, step three is identify the DH parameters. So theta, D, A, alpha, put those in the table. Then define the link transformations for each joint. So you would go from joint one to joint zero, and then joint two to joint one, joint three to joint two, so on. And finally, multiply all of them together to get the transformation from the base to the tip. 